This month really marched along. A Dumb Birthday Game from March 23, 1996 closes out the month and is titled The Lady Doth Protest Too Much. It starts off with the wit of Jack and Norm always just so happy to speak with each other. Our players for this fine broadcast are Jack Hart, Tom Howie, producing and playing and looking good even though appearing on the game is a menial task. The lovely Miss Annette and a request from Norm to please leave her dog out of it. Phyllis from Appleton, Wisconsin. Dan from Maryland. And Kevin in Dorchester, who has a complaint to file with the Dumb Birthday Game Board of Directors. The Birthdays. Marty Allen in Dan Sings the Age with a Bluegrass Flare. Chaka Khan, also known as Yvette Marie Stephen. Norm goes all bluegrass here. And just you wait to hear Norm recreate his introduction of Jerry and the Hayshakers playing Nova Scotian music? Louis Anderson, Rick Ocasek, who was married to Paulina Paratskova. Norm, believing Mr. Ocasek is listening, has a message for him. We are momentarily interrupted by Phyllis, who refers to the dumb birthday game as the stupid birthday game. Norm corrects her. Quote, please, we have some pride, you know? End quote. Amanda Plummer, daughter of Christopher Plummer. The Lone Ranger and Tonto make the first of their two cameo appearances during the game here. We move to some birthdays from March 25th. Elton John and the Lone Ranger and Tonto return. Aretha Franklin and the handsy Gloria Steinem. Other earth-shattering topics discussed are Norm thinking about giving a warm-up birthday for players to get the feel of the game and mere seconds later makes a decision on that. The ever-expanding Dumb Birthday Game rulebook, which is up to 900 pages. We learn of an old colonial New England saying, Norm just may write a bluegrass opera sung with a Wisconsin accent. And which do you prefer? Beano or Bingo? Beans or Bings? How about Normo? Maybe not because of the two O's. How about Normie? With a Y? There is sudden realization that this is what is airing on a 50,000-watt radio station. Jack does some math that pains Norm so greatly that blood stopped flowing to his fingers. Most importantly, we gain some valuable insight into the prize closet where Norm gathers all the goodies for our winners. Then the consternation begins. Contestants suggesting that if Jack wins, he could will the prizes to someone else. The protest continues with sections from the rulebook being quoted, but alas, Jack doesn't get anything, so there's nothing to pass down. But that doesn't prevent another attempt saying that the prize must go to the contestant calling the longest distance, which, in this case, would be Phyllis in Wisconsin. And the show closes with what becomes a 50,000-watt party line. Cheese with your apples? Wisconsin mosquitoes? Ice cream and cake? It's madness! and Norm deftly regains control in the smoothest of fashions. Episode 79, The Lady Doth Protest Too Much, begins in 3, 2, and 1. You? Oh, it's always a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you. I imagine it probably is, because we're both wits, and we're both... Uh, well... I uh, can't think of anything else. <laughs> I can't, I'm not even sure we passed that. Well, test. we're both wits, at any rate. And uh, at least, uh, I, you know, I used to be in the textile business. I used to be knitwit. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 and the two of us make up one wit, so each of us is a half wit. Yeah, yeah. You, I thought, I thought, sure, you were going to get around to doing <laughs> that one. <laughs> well, I was going to, but I figured, hey, that's old. Oh, oh yeah, like that's always been a criteria, <laughs> for sure. Oh, that's old. Oh, oh, hold on a minute while I hold my sides in laughter. Oh, gee. We have a Tom Howie is here. He's a, do. He's a big-time uh, producer, you know, here at WBZ. Uh-huh. And it was hard to get him to come on the show, uh, as you know, just as part of the dumb birthday game, because he's got big-time stuff to do. Is there, or was he booked on one of the other stations? Please. Please. <laughs> I suppose that was that was new. That, that yeah, joke. Yeah. I'm yeah. a busy man. Yeah, he is a busy man. He's got to keep us on the air. He's got to produce. He's got to do stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a menial job. The but he's got to look good. Most importantly, that's, that's right. And the fact that the fact that you would take time out from your important jobs 
to do this menial task of appearing on this Hakamami Hakamami kind of program called the Dumb Birthday Game, I think is a tribute to the fact that you don't mind stooping low and into the gutter <laughs> and into this sleazy part of the WBZ program. <laughs> I think I'm being a little too hard on myself, you think? <laughs> well, maybe a little. <laughs> Just a little bit. Okay. Okay, let's see who else is uh, playing the uh, Dumb Birthday Game. The, the Miss Annette, who's... who's uh, please don't tell us about your dog anymore right now, okay? I won't. You're a good person. So you, uh, you, find, you talked your way... Through Tom and Mike into the dumb birthday game, eh? I did. That was you, silver tongue devil. That was just so darn nice. Okay, we also have Phyllis. I'm sorry. I, you know what I keep doing? One moment, please. I don't know what it is. You see, I've got these big, athletic hands, <laughs> and I have to hit the uh, this little touch screen thing, and it's a very small space that you hit to get people on the end to Use do all a things. Pencil. Use. Use a pencil? Yeah. That wouldn't work. Well, yeah, no, I don't think a pencil. It's a touch screen. No, it's a touch screen. It needs the vibration from our entire bodies, the heat. It needs the heat from it, my mass of body well, then, and the electricity I... that just surges through. Uh, yes, yes, okay, let's, let me try Phyllis again. I'll do it a little more delicately, Phyllis. despite the fact that I have athletic hands. <laughs> hello, hello, Phyllis. Hello. Yes, you. Can you hear me? I think Annette is going to talk through this whole thing. You have that kind of have that feeling, do you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> uh, where, where are you? Where are you calling from, Phyllis? Where are you? I'm calling from Appleton, Wisconsin. Oh, from mm -hmm. Appleton, Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. Son of a gun. That's the. Uh, I hate to say it, but the home of you know who. Yeah, but I do. Joe McCarthy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. From, is, is there a university? The University of Wisconsin. Is that in Appleton? Well, branches of the University of Wisconsin are all over, but Lawrence Lawrence University or Lawrence College, as it used to be known, is in our town. And and your call and can you hear you can hear obviously can hear us in Appleton. Oh yes, oh yes, I listen to you every weekend for about a year now. Yeah, that's wonderful. I love the way you, that little upper Midwestern kind of uh, uh, lilting kind of way you talk. Oh, thank you. You probably are not even aware of it, but no. I'm 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 falling in love with it. Now is Wisconsin where you do the wash? Pardon me? Is that where you do the wash uh, with an R? Oh, no. Or uh, Mont uh, I know some people from Montana and also the far west that mm -hmm. talk that way. They, uh, they say, uh, I'm from, uh, I'm going to wash Washington. I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Washington. There's a, somehow an R gets there. Maybe it's the R's that we don't, that we leave out. Yeah, mm -hmm. they all float there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, we have Dan, who's uh, in an interesting, exotic place like Maryland. Oh, good old Maryland. That's right. And it's just as cool down here as it is up there. Is it really? Because it's... The ground's not shaking like I heard on your news report. Yeah, it's 28 degrees mm -hmm. uh, right here right now. That's that's not... I mean, for, for... No, it's 34 here. But that's just because I've been talking a little bit. You've got, a, you've got an interesting voice. Very deep, rich voice. That's really nice. Oh, thank you. Well, actually, I sing tenor in a bluegrass band, but that's another thing. Oh, do you? But, uh, yeah, I, I guess... I. I kind of range all different ways. Oh, is that uh, so? You you develop you develop kind of a southern. Well, you have sort of a southern accent because Maryland is uh, sort of the south. Yeah, it's sort of the south, and I've I've been lucky enough to visit many different states and get blessed with their accents. Yes, sir. So we used to have we used to have I've, I've often kidded on the air about the fact that in my earlier days in broadcasting we used to have these country and western groups uh, that came from around here. And they try to develop accents like you, like you have, but it would be really thick Boston accents, you know, especially when they were talking, you know, about that. Well, there's a fellow by the name of, uh, who has since passed on, a fellow by the name of Joe Valiente, or Joe Val, and the New England Bluegrass Boys. There's a song called Don't Give Your Heart to a Rambler, but he says, Don't Give Your Heart to a Rambler. So uh, oh, he did not try at all to develop an accent. He was so good. He didn't <laughs> no, he just, he just kept his own. These, uh, other, these other groups, too, uh, they used to talk similar to that. Well, not similar, same accent. Like, uh, let's get on our horses. When you see, what do you say, you Padme? You want to get on your horse and go out to the chuck wagon out yonder? You want her? You know? Get on your horse and go get some pizza. <laughs> did you say pizza or pizza? Pizza, pizza man. Pizza, pizza. I, I know how to talk. <laughs> That's right. Pizza is very good. <laughs> Meantime, you know what we're doing? We're holding up Kevin. Oh, let Kevin go. Okay, Kevin, hi. Hello, Ben Norm. 
No, I'm, he said, no, I'm so you're from around here, Kevin, I can yes, tell. Yes, I am. Where, now, I know you, I've, I've talked to you before, I believe. Dorchester. I'm from Dorchester. Okay. Uh, we, yes, we, we have spoken. Uh, yeah. Actually, I have a complaint to file with the dumb birthday game uh, board of directors. Okay. Hmm. I'll, I'll certainly, we, we meet every morning right after the, uh, the program goes off here. We meet at the... 5:40. And start uh, planning birthdays and, for next we, week, That's yeah. right, and we we start planning future strategy and everything. So they will get the message at 5:40 this morning. What shall I tell them? Uh, well, I won in uh, early January of this year, hmm. and I've yet to receive my gift. Really? Yes. I tell you what. At the end of all of this, mm -hmm. you you'll talk with the Tom Howie, okay? okay. And uh, he'll take your name and address. I thought I'd gotten them all out except for the ones. We had three winners last week, or two or three winners. I forgot. And and uh, and uh, and, uh, and I thought I got them all out, including including some older ones. Unless unless I had a, a, an incorrect address or something like that. Anyway, we'll okay, take your name and address. We'll certainly correct that. All right. Okay, I'll take it. At least I, I, I'll, I can't, I can't promise you that. I have to take it up with the board of directors, as you know, and they will take a vote on whether or not they want to send you stuff, or they, what they might say, he's gotten tons of stuff. He's lying. Sometimes they do that. They get a little huffy for having to be in so early. Uh. Thank you very much. And now back to our regularly scheduled program. <laughs> okay, let's try, let's try some birthdays. Okay, I was thinking of adding a new feature, and that is throwing out. A birthday person and guessing their age would it not counting just so we could all warm up. But then I thought about it and I thought, boy, that's a stupid idea. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> I was thinking of when I was a kid, we used to go up to Salisbury Beach a lot and they used to have a Beano game. A Beano at that time was legal in Massachusetts. And uh, the, the, uh, the Beano Hall would open about uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And for the first half hour or something, they would have warm-up games. And I thought it was like, yet we would go and play because it didn't cost anything. But then again, you never got any prizes. So as I look back on it, I think, what was the point of all of that? If we sat on there playing Vino, you know, it was for free, well, but we, but, we, but, but, but you didn't win anything. Well, you see, look at the beauty of that. Now you see, now you're on the radio, and it's from all those years of practice and yelling, Vino! Beano. Yeah. I want to know what Beano is. It sounds like a cross between perhaps uh, Bingo and Kino, but I don't that was know. No, it's Bingo. They used to call it Beano. Then I don't know. Somebody got the idea that the, maybe the letters in Bingo was sexier than the letters in Beano. I'm not really sure. But the, the line I always liked was at the end. She was going to cough. <coughs> Thank you very much. It wasn't much of a cough. <laughs> no, I, no, that's because I'm, I'm a showbiz creature and i try not to cough into your ear too much <laughs> anyway uh, the, the last line was somebody would say beano you know and then the, the guy calling out the numbers would say uh we apparently have a winner here but however do not disturb your beans the player may be wrong <laughs> See, and then somebody would come out and check the card, make sure they got the right, uh, they, you know. They, they, How were you spelling well, Beano? Well, you see, back, back, just a little bit of historical information. Back in those days, you see, they used to play with beans, and so they called it Beano. But then after a while, they started playing with bings. And that's, <laughs> yeah. No, that's actually why they called it Beano. You, you, you sort of put little bean-like things over the numbers. It was spelled B-E-A-N-O, uh -huh. Beano. Isn't that exciting? That's where they got that don't spill the games, uh, don't spill the beans game from. Yeah, there. you know what it might have been? It might have been like, a, like it seems to me when people have, have got a whole bunch of like records or something, they make that kind of obsolete and they go into like LPs and then they go into compact discs and all that's, you know, they keep selling more products. So I guess when they went from Beano to Bingo, all the Beano cards became obsolete and the people who printed those cards then made another big hefty kind of uh, profit, you know, by by recalling those or saying, throw those out, they're obsolete, it's now bingo. I wouldn't be surprised if they don't call it something else in the next year or two. Well, you see, it was the people who who, uh, who made the, the I's and the G's for printing presses that really made made out big. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm not that even going to add my to it. There, there, there seemed to be no reaction to that at all, Jack. Does that discourage you at all? <laughs> <laughs> it was just, you know, it was, it was, a, it was, a, it was an economic uh, uh, a bit of information. I see. Uh -huh. 
Okay. What shall we call the next game when they want to they want to make bingo obsolete? Well, we have to find out which letters are going to bring in the most amount of money. I never thought of that. There probably is probably a team doing that right this minute. Mm -hmm. Maybe that was something like Normo. Normo with N O R M O. N O R M. Oh, yeah, that's five letters. That'd be yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. But then again, you'd have two O's. Well, you know, it makes it interesting. Yeah, you say under the letter O, the number six, and you wouldn't know where to put the bean. Right, you have you two columns of two different numbers. You can call it what? Normie. What are, we, what are we talking about? <laughs> Hey, that's why we have this big 50,000-watt radio station to talk on. Yeah. That's right. We get this big 50,000-watt station that gets halfway around the world, and we're sitting here talking really stupid, even more stupid than usual. Little George Westinghouse finds out what's going on at his radio station during the night. <laughs> we're all goners. He didn't invent the air brake just for this, he'll say. Take my number off the computer, please. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's do today's uh, birthdays. Today is uh, March 23rd, of course. Uh, Saturday, March 23rd, and today's the birthday of Marty Allen, the comedian, mm -hmm. half of the uh, team of Allen and Rossi, the one with the wild hairdo. Mm -hmm. That's Marty Allen. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, t how old do you think he would be, or is, today? We'll start with you, Annette. What do you think? 63. Uh, Annette says 63, okay. And uh, Phyllis from Appleton, Wisconsin says? About 68. 68, okay. Mm -hmm. And Dan, what do you think? 63. Okay, I was going to ask you if you could sing that in bluegrass style. Good. Okay. He's going to be 63 years old today. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's I good. like it. I, yeah. I, I do, too. I think well, that's great. <laughs> and, Kevin, how old do you think, and I'll, I'll speak in your language, how old is Matty Allen on this day in March? Well, March 23rd. I have to say, if still alive, he must be 65. Okay, 65. Okay, Tom, what do you think? I'll say 67 years old. Well, eh? You sounded like you were... Uh, I'm not too confident at. in my answer, but, no, but the way you I'll, said, I'll stick with my gun. No, no, the way you said it, it sounded like you were a doctor analyzing some illness. <laughs> the okay. prognosis uh, is 67. Yeah, 67 years old, and... Uh, I don't know whether he'll live to be 68 or not. But, uh, however, he does seem to have kidney stones, and that may be the only thing bothering him. And A Beano stone. There he goes. See, there there he goes. With this uh, anyway, uh, Jack, what do you think? Uh, Marty Allen. I've just been trying to do the math here. Uh, 66. So you all have been very kind. Actually, he's 74. Wow. Yeah, he's a lot older than anybody imagined. Wow. But the time older than you know. He is older than I am. Isn't wow. that wonderful? I'm so grateful when I meet somebody older than I am. <laughs> I embrace them and kiss them on each cheek, but I think I'll forego that uh, should I ever meet Marty Allen. <laughs> uh, but Tom uh, Tom said the 67. He came the closest. No, oh, no, you said 68. Oh, I'm sorry, Tom. Oh, well, I, well, I cross out your name as the winner of this score. That's right. Phyllis said 68. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Ooh. Chaka Khan. Ooh. So her real name is Yvette Marie Stephen. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? She changed it to Chaka Khan. It sounds like Yvette. Sounds, sounds like what? It's it kind of close to Yvette. Yvette Chaka. Chaka yeah. Khan, Yvette Stephen. Yeah, it sounds similar. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, her biggest hit was I Feel For You. <laughs> uh, that, that, and I'll give you the year so that uh, you'll get kind of be able to get a rough idea of how old she is. That was eight, 1984. 12 years ago, 1984. That was written by Prince, and uh, Stevie Wonder played the harmonica on that record. I can just hear it now. Yeah. I feel for you. <laughs> That's how I do it, bluegrass style. <laughs> sort of. I can feel for you, my darling. <laughs> <laughs> Tell her that my darling is a play romantic. <laughs> Oh, my. We used to have a program, too, called Jerry and the Hay Shakers. I, that was more Nova Scotian <laughs> kind of music, I think, the Hay Shakers. Yeah, and he would, uh, the opening was always, this, and we never could add lib worth anything. We'd say, okay. I, I suppose my voice was a little higher then because I was very young. Okay. It's uh, that time of the week when we push back the furniture, roll up the rug, and have 
A real old-fashioned hoot nanny tootie toot poop or something. I can't remember how the rest of it went. <laughs> but Jerry and the Hayshakers, and he would start fiddling away there. Why I brought that up, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm really impressed. It's your show. <laughs> it's no wonder that at parties people walk away from me. Excuse me, I've got to go into the next room. I think the punch is there. <laughs> uh, anyway, we'll start with you, Jack. Chaka Khan. Chaka Khan and the Hay Shakers. Yeah, that's right. I'm pushing back the furniture and rolling up the rug right, right, right now. <laughs> and a Rudy Toot Poop. Um, <laughs> let's see. She's 12 years older than she was in 1984. And no doubt 13 years older than when she was. She was in 1983. Yeah, and a year younger than she'll be next year. Next year. That, if that helps you at all. <laughs> well, it does. Uh, let's see. And some drank last year. Uh, she is uh, it's 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 so painful to hear him go through this. I can't, I can't bear it. Uh, 40, 50. I'll try to write that down, but as you were speaking, the fingers on my right hand began to freeze. <laughs> the blood stopped flowing to the fingertips. I, and the, tell me what you said I, again 50? 50, yeah. 50, okay. What do you think, Tom? 48. Tom says 48. The prognostication is 48. Kevin? I want to say 42. 42. Okay. And Dan? Going with 40. I'm sorry, 40? Yes, sir. 40. 40. Okay. Uh, Phyllis? I say 35. Phyllis says 35. 35. Yeah, 3, 5. 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, 45. 45. 45. See what happens when you don't have an old England accent? I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> if you would say 45. See, 45. then I understand that. 45. 45. Shaker Khan is 45. <laughs> Annette, what do you say? I say 43, and I don't even know who she is, so I no. don't have a clue. That's interesting because that's exactly how old oh. she is. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, she's Whoa. 40, 43. Oh. Hi, George. By, but no, it's by George. <laughs> anyway, no, you're absolutely right, 43. Uh, Louis Anderson, and Louis Anderson, the, the chunky guy, he's written a book, and I guess he every time he gets on television, when he's not doing his bit, he's uh, kind of fetching about his upbringing. I guess his parents were not kind to him, or his father or something. His father was an alcoholic, and people made fun of him and poked at him with sticks. And, <laughs> and I guess that's why he got to be a comic, because uh, that's the way you... No, but I mean, really, I'm, I'm serious. I think that's the way... It's yeah. an escape from, from the sadness of your life by trying to make other people laugh. That's right. That's right, because... The tears of a clown. But that's right. I, Pagliacci, Pagliacci, wait a minute, Pagliacci. I think I might write a song... But that is a theme and call it Pagliacci. You know, you could do a whole opera. Oh, I think that's a little, little, uh, kind of, a little too adventuresome, I think. Oh. Yeah, I think. I bet you could. I think I've got the song now. You could do it in bluegrass and uh, you could have, uh, you with know, a your, your, with a Wisconsin, that's right, with a Wisconsin a little lil, that'd be oh, good. Wow. Or get a bluegrass tenor to sing it. That's right. Is there a Pagliacci. We've always been under the impression we had. I don't know. I don't know if I can. Announcers, and that you have the accent. Ooh. Oh, that's good a, for that's, you. That, that's a that's a, that's kind of a misconception. A lot of people have. They feel that uh, that uh, we have the accents and they don't. <laughs> Let me laugh. I, I, I laugh. I laugh at that. <laughs> okay, Dan. How old is Louis Anderson? Ooh, mercy day. I would say 59. Mercy Day. I'm going to incorporate that into... I'm, I can think I can say Jeekers Mercy Day. That, <laughs> that works. <clears throat> okay, 59. And Annette, what do you think? I still don't have a clue, and I'll say 64. 64 for Louis Anderson. Yeah, let's see. Uh, Kevin? Well, I have no clue. And I will say... It's funny. I thought I thought people would know Louis Anderson, big big heavy set guy. Big heavy set guy. Has yeah, yeah. he started any movie, any movies? Um, he, he just had a, a TV show canceled. Okay. Uh, and he wrote a book. Uh, he was on a lot of TV shows, plugging the book about his unhappy childhood and stuff. I was fat and unhappy as a child. <laughs> yeah, I think that was the <laughs> title of it. I was a fat and unhappy guy that 
always chattering and stuttering at all times? Is that the same comedian? No, 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 no. He doesn't no. stutter. No. Okay. Um, I'm going to say 54. Did someone say that? Uh, nobody did say that. I'll say 54. However, according to the rules of the game, from our thick 900-page rule book, <laughs> Uh, you can guess the same age that somebody else's guessed too. We we okay. don't for, we don't forbid that because okay. we're that kind of people. Uh, Jack, what do you think? Forty three, forty three. Okay, and Phyllis. I don't know who he is, but I'm going to say fifty. Fifty. Okay. I always said, and that's a that's a slogan that goes back to colonial days here in New England. If you don't know their age. Say 50. <laughs> and then leap into the air, clicking your heels. <laughs> go to Kansas. And go to Kansas. <laughs> I, I, maybe maybe that page is torn out of the book. Uh, Tom, what do you say? I'll say 49. He sounds serious for a free young producer. Anthony <laughs> works with me for a few more weeks. He won't be, he'll be, he'll be talking silly. Me that are talking mad. Like, why did I go into this field of work? I could have been cutting men's clothes in a tailor shop. Who needs this? Okay. I guess he could just leg up. Yeah. Louis, Louis Anderson is 43, which is exactly what the Jack Hard said. Oh, nice. 43, yeah. Uh, he wouldn't be happy with you on that, with that 64. Wow. Mm. Yeah, Sorry he's, about that. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's a, a young, uh, comparatively young, fat guy. But, you know, well, he's... Well, fat he, makes you look older. He has lived <laughs> enough life to be 64. He, that's right, too. He had enough of sorrow and, and everything in his life, which apparently he's eager to tell you about. <laughs> so don't ever ask. Oh, God. Okay. You you know Rick Ocasek? Oh, yeah. Formerly of the group Cars, the skinny guy. Mm -hmm. He's from here. He's from Boston. Yeah. Singer, guitarist. His biggest hit was Drive... In uh, 1984, he had some he had some funny uh, things I'd, I'd see on MTV. Yep, he had some good videos in the early days. Of yes, videos. that's right. Have, I haven't heard about him really? lately. Have you? Is he still singing or performing anywhere? Um, you know, he always turns up. You know, uh, working on. He's always, he's always working on something. Working on with you know, always working working on something. But uh, in the meantime, he's married to um, super leggy model um, Paulina Poriskova. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm saying, oh, yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't have a clue about that. <laughs> but I say, oh, yeah, yeah, it's a, it, it makes me sound hip, like I really know what's going on. And sometimes you see them around town. Oh, re well, yeah, he's, he still lives here, does he not? Or, I think so. Or at least maintains an address. <laughs> he's probably listening to this program right now. <laughs> hey, Rick, yeah, right. how's your leggy lady friend? <laughs> what do you say, sweetheart? Uh, anyway... Hmm. This program is really going down the tube. Well, they have to cover up those legs tonight. It's cool as it is up there. Uh, yes, a question from the lady there, please. Yeah, thank you. Who is he? What's his name again? Rick Ocasek. He was with a, a rock group called The Cars, as in automobiles. Of all nights for me to pick to join the stupid birthday game. No, dumb birthday game. I mean, please. Dumb. You have some pride, you know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, I feel stupid because these these names could be in Greek. I know it. These are these are not easy names. <laughs> They're obscure. I'm giving you another this obscure one after nice. this, and then we're going to go to some familiar names. Oh, thank you. Mm. So you can make a comeback. Cause nobody's really leading. We have uh, three. They're fumbling. Well, Annette, uh, Phyllis, and Jack all have just have one apiece. Anybody can get caught up. Okay. Uh, okay, I'll start with you, Phyllis. What do you think? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, since. <clears throat> Since you're sitting right in front of me here in the classroom. That's right. Rick Ocasek, how old, how old would, you, would you guess? Well, since this is the first time I've heard his name, uh, 38? 38 is a good first time guess. That's not an endorsement of 38, you understand, or a clue as to whether you're close or not, but <clears throat> I'm just commenting on the way you said it. And it was said so nice. Mm -hmm. Really just so darn nice. Tom, how old would you say Rick Ocasek is? You know who uh, you, you know who he is? Yes, I do. I, I wondered if he was not a little before your time. Uh, no. Perhaps a little yeah. bit before my time. But you know anyway? Not, I wouldn't say that. Um, I'll say he's forty-one. Uh, Tom says forty-one, and uh, Annette says forty-two. Forty-two. 
I said that with conviction. If you did say with conviction. You said that like you really knew, knew his age and everything. That was very good. Wasn't that a good fake? Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I've read fakes from Malagua to Tierra del Fuego. <laughs> and that was the biggest fake job I have ever heard. Watch it. Don't <laughs> no. push it. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Dan, what do you think? 41. Dan says 41. Okay. That sounded like your late night romantic on the air voice. That was my late night. Late night, I, I have a frog in my throat here. Oh, I rent. Uh, Kevin, what do you say? Well, his name draws a blink in my mind, so I'm driving out a tune of 49. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Well, that was just so beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> it drove the gas right out of my stomach. <laughs> so beautiful. <laughs> Jack, what do you think? Poor Jack's in the other studio. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. Um, I would say uh, 46. 46. Okay, and I would say, well, anyway, he's 47. Hmm. So, and I, yeah, you, you said 46. Nobody said 48. So, no. Jack is now burst into the lead with two of the closest answers. How about uh, this, the last one from March 23rd? Then we'll go to March 25th. So would you all turn to page March 25th? Thank you. <laughs> Amanda Plummer. Do you know Amanda Plummer? Oh, yeah. She's the daughter of Christopher Plummer. Mm -hmm. How come Amanda is bringing in that wrench and is going to the bat toilet? Amanda Plummer. Ah. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, it's a whole series of hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Lone Ranger and Tonto jokes. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was really something. <laughs> As a matter of fact, uh, it, when we guess March 25th, one of those born on that date is Elton John. Somehow there seems to be, could be a tie in here, but I won't push it. Mm -mm. Anyway, Amanda Plummer. <laughs> oh, you got a. She doesn't have rusty pipes, does she? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> rusty pipes was a country uh, and western singer. Oh, that's right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> in, she's been in films. Uh, I got a couple of names. One was So I Married an Axe Murderer mm -hmm. and uh, Needful Things. I don't remember Needful Things at all. I Married an Axe Murderer was on television quite a bit as well as in the theater. Yeah. And needed need, Needful needful Things. Wasn't was, that by Stephen King? Written by Stephen King? Yes, it was. Which one? Uh, I Married an Axe Murderer? Needful uh, things. Oh, needful things. Oh, really? Yes. It was a terrible book. Yeah. Terrible book. Got Glad that. it never came out in Braille. Run <laughs> <laughs> dry. Okay, Amanda Plummer. Let's. She let's was see. also in uh, the Fisher King with uh, yeah. Robin Williams and okay. in Pulp Fiction. Really? Pulp? Yeah. Usually plays like kind of a nutcase of some sort. <laughs> Didn't she also see an Agnes of God? Hmm. No, that was. Uh, was uh, a Tilly. Meg Tilly was Meg that? Meg Tilly, that's right. Okay, let's start with, uh, I like, like to start with Jack, because he goes through such hell coming up with an answer. <laughs> yeah, but he's always right. Yeah. yeah no. Well, not always. Well, two, you got two out of four, sure, yeah. Well, you know, I prepare all week long. I do birthday ups, I do, I do brain games and puzzles and so forth and so <laughs> on to try and, and to keep my brain flexible. Game. What's that? You're too intelligent for this game, just... Well, no, I'm not too intelligent, but I prepare. I work hard. I, I, I prepare week after week. And he drives right. up and down Brain Tree Road. That's what it is. Yes. <laughs> and he, keep, he keeps himself in, in trim, right, even during the off season. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's right. And yeah. in, in such good training, Jack, you have a lot of heart. Oh, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Mm. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, Amanda, how old would you say Amanda Plummer is than uh, Jack Hart? Amanda, Amanda Plummer, King of the Wild. Um, she is in her 40s, I'm thinking. But how far in is the question? Oh, that is the question, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, yeah. 40, 40, 40, 40, 40. Mm -hmm. 43. 43. Okay, Tom, what do you say? 38. 38. Okay, Kevin? Hmm. Amanda Plummer. 
I would say 44. 44. Yeah. Okay. Da uh, Dan? 46, sir. 46. And Phyllis? 41. I wonder how Tom Brokaw would pronounce your name in town. You'd be Phyllis from Appleton. Thank you very much. I'm so glad I said that. <laughs> see and uh, she would be Amanda Palmer. 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 Um, Palmer. Phyllis and Appleton. I'm waiting for him to get a whole bunch of L's in one sentence so that he so he 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 turns blue and then collapses right in the middle of the news <laughs> game. <laughs> Tongue just falls out of his head. Yeah, I can't <laughs> handle it. Annette. Amanda Plummer, what do you think? I would say roughly, very roughly, 43. <laughs> 43. No okay. Well, you said it. Well, you, you, you're going to say it roughly. I thought you were going to come up like this. But. <laughs> no, I, well, I will if I go ahead. <laughs> say it roughly. Take it. <laughs> okay. Uh, actually, she's, she's, you know, 39. Oh, Whoa. Oh. Yeah, so let's see. Tom said uh, 30. Tom said 38. So Tom, Tom is now on the scoreboard. Good going, Tom. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, we can go across to, uh, to Monday since we don't play the game Monday Monday mornings. Hmm. Although we will we'll be playing it a lot, incidentally, because I'll be sitting in uh, for Bob Raleigh starting Thursday night, Friday morning for the next final week. Right. <laughs> I'll be able to give away whole piles of junk that have been cluttering up my house for so long. <laughs> That's why so they glad. have you there. That's right. Stacks of newspapers you'll be sending oh, out. Oh, I'll be sending all kinds <laughs> of phone books. <laughs> yeah. mm. Old Valentine's Day candy. <laughs> and also, <laughs> also whatever, whatever I can steal out of the desks of the secretaries <laughs> around here at PC. Oh, oh, some, some, some linty paper clips. Yeah, and right. Maybe old a, lifesavers. Yeah, yeah, maybe kind of a half-used tube of uh, some <laughs> off-color lipstick. <laughs> you never know. Funny. Broken staples. <laughs> Yeah, a dried out stamp pad. I still have uh, quite a, about uh, 10 pounds of, of uh, peanut brittle that I, that I haven't uh, given out yet. That's my favorite. Yeah. Well, I, I might have to call about that, I guarantee you. Yeah, also some cat litter. I got lots of used cat litter. Used? Oh, boy, good subtraction. <laughs> well, you can save it for next winter. It'll help you get out of those uh, little skinny spots. <laughs> you send it in Ziploc bags. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and the outside people are steeper. Okay. <laughs> That's right. So, Tonto, go. so, Tonto, yeah. how come Elton looks so flushed? <laughs> Elton John. Oh, boy. I've been, I've been waiting for that uh, this whole game. <laughs> okay. Annette. How how old Elton John today? I'd say. I'll say, are we, oh, hold on. What? Oh, wait a minute. I, I seem to have lost my earphone there for a second. <laughs> okay, let me let me tell you something about Elton John. Maybe to give you a clue. Yeah. Elton John. And not that you don't know a lot about him. Oh, we're uh, into that. Yeah, his name. Oh, my. <laughs> I don't know. His, his name was uh, Reginald Kenneth Dwight, of course, from England. He, gained, he earned a scholarship to the Royal Academy of Music at age 11. Elton John said he got his name from Elton Dean's and John Baltry's first names. Mm -hmm. no, they, were they were blues. Uh, they were blues musicians in uh, the uh, when when English music was starting to uh, uh, emulate American music. Oh, all okay. right, Jack. Okay, and he let's see his first. Uh, his biggest hits, Don't Go Breaking My Heart, recorded with Kiki D in 1976. There's a clue, 20 years ago. Mm. And Crocodile Rock, Elton John. Right okay. to bite on you. Yeah. <laughs> what do you say, Dan? How old would you say Elton John is? I thought it was me. You're Elton John? <laughs> no, I'm not Elton John, but I thought it was my turn. Oh. <laughs> no, no, I, no. I, I kind of mix it all up so, so everybody gets the chance to go first because nobody seems to want to. Would you mention my name first? Oh, okay. oh, did I? Yes. Well, you can have it. Oh, Phyllis. Okay. Is this Phyllis or no. Annette? Oh. This is Annette. Yeah. Okay. How old is Elton John? Fifty-seven. Then? How much? 
57. Okay. And Phyllis, what do you think? 55. Okay. And Dan? 52. Okay. Kevin? 47. Tom? 47. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, Kevin said 47, and Tom says? 53. 53. And Jack? Uh, plain old 50. Plain old 50 uh, would be the closest. He's at 49. Mm. Oh, 49, yeah. Nobody I'm said... One two years no, one, one year away. Yeah, no, Kevin said 47, so you were very close. How about Aretha Franklin? <clears throat> one of my favorite uh, singers. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, biggest hit was Respect, which he did in 1967. I can't believe it went that far back. Mm -hmm. The Queen of Soul was the movie, was in the movie The Blues Brothers mm -hmm. in 1980. The Blues Brothers that far back, too? Yeah. Where does time ever go? Where does time... Anybody oh. know the answer to that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I got a stack of it at home, uh, but I, I finished reading them if anybody yeah. wants to. That's them on my spice drawer. Yeah, I, I have a couple of boxes downstairs unpacked. Of time. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> anyway, Aretha Franklin, today, uh, not today, but uh, March 25th is her birthday. And Tom, how old do you think she will be on March 25th? On March 25th, she'll be 54. On March 25th. She'll be 54. I believe him. Okay. Yeah, that, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Kevin, what do you think? On March 25th, she'll be 54. 54. He sounds so sure. You see, okay. <laughs> Annette, what do you think? Well, I'll say this with conviction. 52. 52. That conviction. She keeps on saying it with conviction. She's going to end up in prison. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> as long as she just... Give everyone respect. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> boy, talk about a chain of fools. Yeah, we better, <laughs> we better get this thing over with as quickly as we can. <laughs> uh, Dan, what do you, how old do you think she'll be on, the 20, on Monday? Oh, no, I'm, uh, no, I'm uh, 59. No. I'm sorry, what was that 59, all? 59, Norm. You sound, you sound like that wrestler who calls me every now and then. What about the accent, Norm? I just ate some hot pepper and sausage pizza. That's probably what did it. I see. Okay. Uh, Phyllis, what do you think? Uh, 56. 56. And what do you think, Jack? 50. Hmm. 55. Okay, 54 is correct. Ah, uh, yeah, oh, that's exactly correct. So that's Kevin and Tom. All right. It means Kevin now has one, and uh, Tom and Jack are tied with two apiece. Thank you, Tom. Right. Wow. Okay, here's the. Here, this would be the last one. Oh, oh the tension oh, mounts. Oh, this is boy. I know this is really exciting. Uh, mm. Gloria Steinem, you know, the uh, feminist, the founder of uh, Ms. Magazine, mm -hmm. uh, and stuff. Anyway, her birthday is also the 25th. Mm. And let's see. We'll start. Let's start with you, Jack. How old do you think Gloria Steinem will be on the 25th? Steinem. I think she's one of those people who you, <clears throat> when you hear her, how old she is, you say, oh. Um, <laughs> That's a hint. Um, uh, yeah, so I'm thinking that she's older than I think. <laughs> yeah, I see. Uh, would, you, would you care to share, share any of those thoughts with us? Oh. Um, well, you see, I, I think that she's about 56, so that would mean that she would be about 64. Okay. You see? I see. Uh, cause, yeah, because she's older than you would think. Yes. And that's how you worked up that projection. That, yes. That's very good. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, really nice. Thank you. Um, I wonder if you transfer it to another class, please. <laughs> you're, you're a very disruptive influence. <laughs> Tom, how old do you think uh, Gloria Steinem will be? She's a very attractive lady. I, I remember interviewing her once, and she just couldn't keep her hands off. It was really <laughs> sickening. And were you surprised at how old she was? Uh, uh, yeah, she was a little older than I thought she was. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what I just said, that makes no sense at all. Don't, don't use that as a clue to anything. 58 years old. 58 years old. Okay. 
I'd say she's younger than I think she is, so I'd say she's 22. Uh-oh. <laughs> Kevin, what do you think? Well, following Jack's logic, I was, I think she's 25, but I'll say she's 67. It's a catchy disease. Dan, glasses. Yeah. Dan, what do you think? I don't mean about Gloria Steinem. I mean, what do you think about life? Where do you think we're going? What is it all life, about? Life, the universe, and everything. Yes, I think she's 61. I'm sorry, did you say 50 or 60? 60. 61. 61. Okay. Yes, uh, Phyllis? That's exactly what I was going to say. 61. 61. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what do you think, Annette? You know, I feel a lot safer working with Annette. You do. <laughs> 66. Excuse me. Somebody stepped on my line. Oh, that uh, that laugh was kind of scary, wasn't it? Yeah, sorta. Yeah. What do you, what do you, how old do you think she is? Kind of scary. I feel like I'm being pressured here, guys. Sixty-six. Sixty-six. Okay, actually, uh, Gloria Steinem uh, will be sixty-two. Oh. Huh. oh wow. So I believe uh, I believe the sixty ones. Yep, yeah, the sixty ones have it. That'd be Phyllis, and Dan. We don't Congratulations. Yeah, that means that, uh, no, uh, Jack has three. So Jack has one. I, I hate when, oh. when somebody in the station wins because we don't give them prizes, and it means the clutter continues at my house. I could have got rid of a whole lot of junk. Jack, just... what you can do is you can will those prizes. <laughs> yes. We should put up another rule in the thousand-page rule book. So the one that they can't win more than once in a month, and Jack's won more than once in a month. Yeah, but see, he doesn't get anything. It's like that free Beano game. <laughs> he, just, <laughs> okay. uh, he plays it to keep his uh, his mind alert uh -huh. and also to try out jokes. As you know, <laughs> Jack is a stand-up comic, and he uses he uses some of his material here just to test it. <laughs> but Norm? Yeah. Yes. Norm? That's why I'm sitting down right now. When? Jack wins or someone from the station wins, yeah. then they uh -huh. forfeit their prize to the one who is farthest away. And Wisconsin is farthest away. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you... Right, Dylan? Right. I go along with that 100%. That's two votes. Go ahead, guys. Okay, see, now... I cannot make these decisions. I'm simply the board one, of one vote on the board of, yes, right, the Dumb Earth Game Board of Directors. You have what? a producer or something like that near, nearby. Mm -hmm. no, no, you could probably take him out for a couple of extra cups of coffee. No, but it, see, we will have that meeting at 540 this morning discussing this. I will be happy to bring that up. Right. And there was something else I was supposed to bring up, too. Right. All about Kevin, whether right. Kevin is telling the truth that he did not get his winnings. Well, uh, Norm, I know it's real hard for you to make these decisions. I, I understand they haven't flown flown in yet from the other countries, and uh, I understand. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I knew what was going on. I wish I, I wish I did too. Maybe it's better we don't. <laughs> yeah. I believe he was referring to the other board members. <laughs> right. Oh, I see. Okay. And what about now? Who who just spoke? Was that you and Ed or oh, Phyllis? Yeah, that was me. Uh, I, I, think. I don't want you to remember uh, Appleton was only a downside. Uh, I'll give you a couple of other names that came from here. What was Eric Weiss's stage name? Do you know? Yes. Yeah, Harry Tudini. You bet. He grew up here. And who wrote the book Giant that they made the movie from? I'm sorry, say that again? Who wrote the... the oh, the book Giant? Edna mm -hmm. Ferber. Right. She also grew up here. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Both grew up in Appleton, <coughs> Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. Mm. Huh. Boy, we're all just sitting here amazed, going, hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Huh. Mm -hmm. I have one for Jack. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Jack, uh, it was, yeah. Uh, apparently, uh, Mr. Dole got a bad case of head lice, but uh, before he could get cured, they all left in a hurry, and uh, somebody uh, asked the little beggars why they left, <laughs> and uh, apparently they were tired of living on the Dole. Oh, 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 oh. 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 Yes. If they can do this Tibet thing, we can. Why not? All right. I have a, a cousin who's the <laughs> pastor of two churches in Wisconsin. Damned if I know which ones. But do you have cheese with your apples? Oh, all the time. Great. 
some cheese with your apple. Wow. You ever? <laughs> what is this? What See, is these the guys don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> no, that's true. Cheese with your apple. Yeah, yeah. All I know in Wisconsin, the, the, I think the mosquito is a state bird. Is that true? State bird is a mosquito? Tell us, get him. Isn't Wisconsin the uh, dairy state or something like that? Yes, it's... Mom, do you ever have cake with your ice cream? It's called America's Dairyland, and that's what I'm like. You know what we can do? We can just gradually fade them all out. <laughs> They're all gone now. <laughs> anyway, Three thank you, Tom. Made. We'll get the... You you hang in there, Kevin, because we want to get the, your name and address and stuff. That's right. All you losers get out, right? <laughs> no, well, no. We, we, the, the reason we were, we're holding you on, because you said you wanted to get anything... So I want to get your name and address and stuff. Oh, no, no. That wasn't me that said that, no. That well, was the other guy. That was the... Who was that? The uh, guy from a different state. Oh, Dan? Confusion and mystery ended that show. Did Kevin change his story? Or not remember his request at the beginning? Was Dan the scapegoat? I don't know. I'm still confused and mystified. Oh, and what happened to all that was added to the agenda to take up with the dumb birthday game board of directors? I do believe resolutions are still pending. Well, before anything else happens, let's close the vault and ride those radio waves home. For nitwits and halfwits. And if I played, we would have combined to be a wit and a half. <laughs> let's continue. For menial tasks, big athletic hands, bluegrass bands, Jerry and the Haymakers, Nova Scotian music, Bino, Bingo, Normo, and Normie, The Lone Ranger, Tonto, Rusty Pipes, Paulina Poritskova, the esteemed Dumb Birthday Game Board of Directors, Peanut Brittle, Junky Stuff, Good Old Fashioned Colonial New England Sayings, Good Old Fashioned Hootenanny Tooty Toot Poops, The King of the Flexible Mind, Jack Hart, The Very Serious, Dr. Tom Howie, and Norm, the showbiz creature, Nathan. I'm the presumptuously witty, Tony Nesbitt. 